you are right on time for Good News with Chris Cashman. Looking back at some of the Feel Good News stories I've been lucky enough to share over the past year. We're going behind the scenes, and I don't want to ruin the Hollywood magic, but this is behind the scenes. It's just me and my camera and your amazing stories, because it turns out it often takes just one person to make a tremendous impact, like the firefighter from Snohomish County that saw a local senior in need, and he used his own time and talents to change her life. Ah yes, mowing the lawn. Loved and hated, but necessary. And that is essentially the way the truly heartwarming story started right here in Monroe. This quaint home over my shoulder, it's been given a new life, thanks to a very special new friendship. I'll tell you what happened. I was trying to mow my yard down the street and my little necklace went off by accident and the firemen came, two firemen came in a aid car and then pretty soon there was a big fire truck came with four more dudes. Brandon, you're the dude that played hero in this story and you thought it was an emergency. So it's like a life alert pendant and she didn't even know that she'd hit it. So we get dispatched, showed up and she was trying to mow her lawn. She's like, what are you doing? She's like, well, I gotta mow. Oh, he said, who mows your yard for me, for you? And I said, well, I got, I have four sons at home and so. Because I shouldn't, at 90, I shouldn't be mowing a yard. Started talking about this place. When I showed up, it was no paint. It's like Rob Wood, just, it needed some love, so. Well, he painted this whole house and it was scraped and caulked. Look what he did, I mean, it's a 1934 house and it looks fine. You've got four sons, 24 hour shifts, and then you just went ahead and squeezed in painting someone's house on the <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah. Nobody asked him to, he just did it. And the fire department, they've helped out. It just changed my life. We have a foundation through our fire department, the Fire 7 Foundation, they donated the paint. And then I just did the work and cleaned it up so that it basically didn't crumble, so. And he's kind of cute, too, with his little hundle. At first, she said, what is that? Handlebar mustache. He's kind of cute. So that's my mustache. She goes, on purpose? <laughs> A few people can change your life. Yeah, hi there from Redmond. Some beautiful property here. Actually, used to be home to some thoroughbred racehorses. They would train right here. These days, horses still hard at work, but perhaps with a greater purpose, therapy. Yeah, it's very rare syndrome that they have. Both my boys have smith lemley opitz um, and it was, the, it was one of the first in utero diagnoses on the West Coast. I mean, really rare. Well, and we didn't, neither of us, my husband or me, grew up around horses at all. Up to the front. Andrew's been here, he's um, 15 now. We've been here since he was, shoot, three and a half is when we first got on the horse and he couldn't walk at that point. So this has been a barn where he's learned to walk. It's been a barn where he's learned to socialize. And we were told about a 50-50 shot that he'd live and about a 50-50 shot that he'd walk. Um, so he's our little miracle. This little bit has been operating on the east side for over 46 years now. So we've become a staple for people with disabilities in our community. We like to call it a little bit magic, but there's a little bit more to it than that. So just sitting on a horse, individuals get that passive 360 degree movement, much like a human pelvis when you're walking. How do you do it? So I'm a physical therapist, that's my job here. We have a couple different types of therapy. So I should have started by Dr. Kelsey. <laughs> I don't usually go by doctor, but I do have that. You do when you're on it. TV, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Even after being here for some time, it, it continues to amaze me what those horses can bring out of the clients. You know, Andrew and Ronan are a pair, and you watch Ronan, and he's looking at Andrew and watching what he's doing, and you know, they, they feed off of each other. I didn't know the magic of a horse until I watched my kid. The first time my other son got on a horse, he was screaming and crying and because he didn't, had no idea and the therapist said just trust me and i thought i will just trust you put him on the back of the horse and my kid's eyes lightened up he sat up straight and off he went just the bond of a, of a kid with a horse it's pretty amazing to watch yeah hi there join me in the wetlands here in an undisclosed location in pierce county it's going to be wet it's going to be muddy but that's the whole point as today is a special conservation effort and a unique partnership between the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and our friends at Woodland Park Zoo. They have gathered for the 31st time to protect an animal you probably didn't even know was in trouble. Bye, little friend. Here we go. 
So the western pond turtle is actually the only native turtle to western Washington. You might be out outdoors and see other turtles, but most of those are invasive red-eared sliders or there are painted turtles. But the western pond turtle is our native turtle to western Washington and it's actually endangered in the state of Washington. Back in the 90s there were only about 150 left in the state and we are on our 31st year of our western pond turtle recovery project. Owie. No, it won't be out. This, you just have to make sure they have nails. This work could not be done without our partners, so the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife works closely with the Woodland Park Zoo. So this little turtle used to be not common everywhere, but common in different spots from British Columbia all the way down to Northern California. And unfortunately, this little turtle started to compete with bullfrogs that are also non-native that people brought in and turned them loose. They decimate the population. We can't have turtles and bullfrogs at the same place. I have some examples of bullfrogs there, and next to them are hatchlings, so you can compare. So, this site that we have now is the site where a lot of these turtles came from and these turtles are going to be released today back into the wild so they can be a natural part of the habitat like they're supposed to be. And we turn now to the inspiring woman from Tacoma who is breaking barriers and fighting for inclusion as Miss Wheelchair Washington. Hello, I'm Layla Leonard. I'm Miss Wheelchair Washington and I'm 23 years old. This is my mom, Marissa, who is here with me. You should know that I am very kind, happy, friendly, and I like to meet people. I'm competing in the pageant because I want to be a role model for other people who have different needs. I want to show people it's okay to be who you are. I am advocating for accessibility for everyone, especially in cars and on planes. It's so hard to go places because my chair won't fit in cars and I can't take my chair on the plane. So the girls got, were able to experience workshops, how to be a great advocate, disability history, leadership, all the way to mental health. It's been really inspiring and empowering seeing the different women in their different chairs, how they get around. What about you, like? The pageant has been lots of fun. I've met so many great people and have a new sisterhood. I'm so happy I got to do this. I want to keep bringing awareness to the world and accessibility to everyone. I want everyone to feel like they belong and are loved because they are. <laughs> Hi, Seattle. That's it. <laughs> It's me again, Layla Leonard. I've been doing great. I'm still volunteering at the YMCA, and I love all my coworkers there. I'm in touch with all my new sisters I met at nationals in Michigan. We talk all the time. I just crowned our new Ms. Wheelchair Washington a few days ago. Congratulations to her, Ms. Yasmeen Myers. I'm so happy I got to experience this opportunity, and I look forward to more great things in the future. Look for me next year. Way to go, Layla. Thanks for checking in, and congrats to Yasmeen Myers, your new Miss Wheelchair Washington. Stick around, folks. More good news with Chris Cashman coming up, including the ultimate cross-country road trip on foot, all in an effort to raise awareness about mental health and addiction. That's coming up. And welcome back to Good News with Chris Cashman. I am Chris Cashman. The dramatic use of moss is simply because I love living here in the Northwest. And I love sharing your stories. And it doesn't get much more inspiring than Greg from Bainbridge. Yeah, hi there, and forgive me for being on my phone, but we are live tracking a rather impressive and inspiring human who should be coming around the bend any time. This is the homecoming, a 10-year dream come true for an ultra marathon runner. Greg Nance of Bainbridge Island has many things to brag about. He ran seven marathons in seven days on seven continents. And now after 10 years of training, Greg is about to return home from his most ambitious run yet. All in an effort to raise awareness for youth mental health and addiction, Greg ran across America. Yeah, so I just ran from New York City to Seattle. 
and we are on a mission for youth mental health. Um, it's always tough to be a teenager, but never more so than now. Between COVID, isolation, all the challenges with social media, it's really, really tough. We want to be there at Run Far Foundation to help young people find purpose, build community, and have fun. Greg, the ultimate how it started, how it's going. It started April 25th in New York, and you've been running ever since. That's right. For me, running has been the way that I've followed my smile. It's been the thing that's kept me happy. It's helped me build my own mental health over the years. And when you do things that you love, you can do them at the highest level. You make great friends that can encourage you and support you as you do it. And you can live the kind of life that you imagine beyond your dreams. This for me has been a dream more than a decade in the making. And it's so sweet that I'm yeah, getting to amazing. make it come true with some of my best friends. You're the best. The your social media, like your Instagram, at Greg Runs Far, has chronicled this unbelievable journey. You're finally back in Seattle today, but the journey's not over. That's right. We're going to do a true Atlantic to Pacific run. So I've got four more days to go 149 miles to Ocean Shores, Washington. But we're declaring victory here in Seattle tonight because this has been just so amazing. I invite you to learn more about runfarfoundation.com. We're a Washington State nonprofit, and if you feel moved, you can actually chip in. Get some! Hi, Chris. Since finishing the run across America, I've been focused on building a pilot program of after school running clubs with Run Far Foundation. Our aim is to get teens around Puget Sound active, engaged, having fun outside to build their mental health and to complete a volunteer conservation project for salmon recovery. We're looking forward to expanding our program in 2023 and look forward to seeing you out on the sound. Yeah, hi there. On a beautiful day like today, a road trip sure sounds tempting. Although it's a bit more ambitious if that road trip is via tractor. You might remember the story I shared about a month ago of Mike from Bellingham who was packing up and hitting the road in his John Deere. A journey that would take him over 1,800 miles all the way to Minnesota, all in an effort to raise awareness and to raise financial support for the fastest growing neurological disease in the world, and one that's expected to double by 2040. People don't realize how prevalent Parkinson's disease is. It affects more people than MS, ALS, and muscular dystrophy combined. And that's a huge number and the growth rate will soon surpass that of Alzheimer's disease. And thinking about it, the highlights of the trip, uh, it, it, it always involved the people. We were in awe. We're like, really? You're gonna raise $50,000 and drive a tractor. Okay, what's going on here? And then we got to know Mike and we're like, Mike's gonna raise $50,000 and drive a tractor. This guy can do it. Mike, your tractor trip took you more than a month. What have you learned? You know, all these, wild and wonderful people that I met on the road. I, many with Parkinson's or people who had Parkinson's in their family. My neighbor across the street has Parkinson's. Next door to her was her father. Down the street was the uncle. And I realized it was literally surrounding me, but no one was talking about it. And in November, my mom was diagnosed with Parkinson's. So it really hit home. You never know. Mike traveled over 1,800 miles to Perch Lake, Minnesota, even dipped a toe in the water for style points, and he's handing you a hefty check. Our chapter covers Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Alaska, but we have three and a half staff members. $50,000 to, to the American Parkinson's Disease Association is a huge deal. It's incredible. Yeah, hi there from Woodenville. We are here to gain a little perspective today. Forced perspective, technically courtesy of an inspiring 14-year-old entrepreneur who is doing some amazing things. He was featured in People Magazine with his mother. Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, saluted him personally for the amazing things he is doing in photography. And it turns out it is not the fancy lenses he's using. In fact, he just uses the iPhone. It's more about what's hiding inside the mind of that photographer. I'm making money off like a hobby that I like to do. It's like the American dream to make money off something that you like to do. By the time he was three years old, he could name every make and model car. Two T-Birds here. One is restored and the other is all original. For the longest time, I just had them on my camera roll and I thought they were the greatest thing ever, but I never showed it to anyone till around about age nine. I was just like getting totally blown away every time he took photos. So I posted it to a local neighborhood Facebook group and that's just kind of when it went viral and everyone was like, oh, this is amazing. You should make a calendar. You should make a book. You bought that Silverhawk with your own money. Yeah, 
and like, calendar sales, book sales, and I eventually had enough. It all started off with one w little wooden car. It wasn't realistic, but I thought it looked so real, but it was sitting on my camera roll for so long, and it was, I didn't really think anyone would care about it, but. Really credit it to his autism, because he's able to see things in more detail than others. Why do you think you're so good at it? Because I practiced for, I have eight years of practice. Why even bring up the fact that he has autism? It's because of autism that he's doing this and not saying it would be so dismissive. That's kind of why we share and it's inspiring to all the young kids that are like him too and all the parents out there who are just getting that diagnosis now and don't know what to expect to see somebody else um, succeeding at such a young age is like huge for them. I have lots of other shots too that are very cool. A fun update for you from my friend Anthony. He had record sales for his calendar this year and there is more good news. His second book will be released here in January. Way to go, Anthony. Stick around, more good news coming up, including couch surfing for a cause. Actually, he's couch commuting in Tacoma. You've got to see this. Thanks for finding your way back to Good News with Chris Cashman, where I embrace the saying, you cannot possibly do all of the good the world needs but the world needs all of the good you can do. Like the Pierce County man who found a truly unique way to just sit there and yet advocate for change, specifically the need to improve some of his city sidewalks. Yeah, hi there, as seen in Tacoma. Do not attempt to adjust your television set. Couch surfing has evolved into couch commuting. So I got some batteries from a friend of mine and I was cruising Craigslist and I saw a hover around mobility scooter that was broken with no batteries. Just went and picked that up and I thought to myself, well, you know, what am I going to do with this? And I put it underneath the couch and it just kind of has evolved from there. People have really enjoyed it. And also sometimes I get people asking me why and... That does bring up a good question. Why? <laughs> just for the absolute absurdity of it because I just thought it was fun. It would be funny to ride around on a couch. I told my friend that I was going to make one. He said, why would you do that? I said, because it's, it's silly and stupid. And he, I said, and I know you're going to want to ride on it. He said, yeah, I'm going to want to ride on it. <laughs> Feels like an ordinary couch. Yeah, it's just an ordinary couch. Instinctually, I got to check the cushions. That is my old TV remote. <laughs> just in time for the holidays. <laughs> Cruising in style. <laughs> Off-roading. Okay. One of the comments I get is people go, well, that's one way to beat gas prices, but it is very inefficient. <laughs> it goes about three miles an hour and has a 10 mile range. Look at that blistering three miles an hour going. It's definitely nice to get out and about, uh, you know, after being so locked down for quite some time. It is a conversation starter. Monday is a busy day for the couch commuter. Yeah, generally when I can. Mondays I go to the Parkway Tavern, which is uh, my favorite watering hole. And Do they have couch parking? Uh, right out front, there's a good spot for me to back it into. Uh, I wouldn't say that they would designate it as couch parking, but yeah, there's a little space there. Yeah, hi there from Seattle's Central District, where an important piece of the community's history is not only being preserved, but it is being renewed. The fire station behind me built in 1908. It is historic, but arguably served a bigger purpose for a long time. And now the Community Food Bank and Resource Center is back. Homecoming is definitely the word, right? We're returning home after, I would say, a little over a year and a half at our temporary location in Capitol Hill and uh, coming home to a completely new setup. We've got this whole space renovated. Okay, so you're number 11. Because we're a nationally and locally registered historical landmark, we didn't mess with the outside that much at all, really, so you can still tell that it's got that, that old spirit to it. We have the original timber from the Elliott Bay Mill, which has uh, been closed for over 100 years, you know what I mean? And that's still exposed wood right upstairs in the part of the building. What can you tell me about the namesake she celebrated on the wall? Yeah, Miss uh, Roberta Bird Barr, definitely a Seattle staple. She's uh, an educator, organizer, journalist, activist, so it's very important to us to be able to memorialize and honor our black Seattle people that have led the way for us, you know. Oh, I'm a volunteer. Uh, I've been with Bird Bar for a year and a half now. You know, there's a delivery this morning, I think oftentimes from a farmer's market or a local co-op that brings in the freshest produce that is, it's incredible. It's uh, really high quality, really lush colors, the, it's vibrant. 
Mm -hmm. It's really, really a treat to be able to offer. So the food bank uh, titled the market now. You know, we have the canned goods, we got some tuna, some chicken and whatnot, but then we have fresh salmon that we got in today. They have options available to them, right? We're really coming from a mindset of abundance. The ultimate vision is to secure a more equitable uh, future for all Washingtonians, and we have many programs that help do that, so it's not only our market. We're always looking to stock the volunteer roster, absolutely. And now to Bonnie Lake, where a local elementary school got creative with the hopes of setting a world record. But the goal was more important, filling the food bank. When the special music comes on, that is your cue that we are one minute away from knocking over 5,000 cereal boxes and setting a new record for elementary school. Piggybacking off what happened last year during a COVID, kind of a down year in terms of what we could and couldn't do for kids, an idea came through our PTA of cereal boxes being knocked down. And Every single cereal box that has been knocked down right now is one act of kindness. Yeah. So Principal Snyder and myself talked about um, connecting it to our food bank. And uh, we always hear that cereal is one of their most needed items. From there, we raised 2,500 and uh, it emerged to Bobby and I like, oh my gosh, we could break a world record because we looked it up. Because last year we got 2,000, now we have like 5,000 something, so. So the world record is a bit of a disguise for a fun fundraiser to fill the food bank. Yeah, <laughs> just seeing kids happy and Every student at this school knows what they did and the impact that they have on our community. And I think that is a win. You have a pretty important job to kick it off. Do you get nervous? Yes. Six, five, four, is that a nervous look or an excited look? Oh. <laughs> Two, one, they set all those boxes up. We didn't, we just were there. Um, and so it's really neat when, when the kids empower themselves to do the whole thing and we just get to sit back. Since you two were in charge of a world record, do you even think you're gonna be able to walk the hallways without your classmates wanting autographs? Yeah, um, yeah, I think everybody's gonna want yeah, autographs. I don't, I don't even have a pen right now. Yeah, um. Congrats to the school, you did it, and more importantly, you stuffed a van for the food bank. It's known as the market now, Bonnie Lake Food Bank. So that's what we're really excited about, partnering with the market, because they're just phenomenal. I think we're done. Yeah. Well, all good things must come to an end, including Good news with Chris Cashman. But you know, we could make this a lifestyle. You keep looking out for each other, be kind, and don't be surprised if you see me there to share more good news. We'll see you next time. Can you grab all that stuff and bring it with you? Back.